Welcome back to the Aubergine Chef. Today we'll be making angel food cake, ermine or roux based icing, and we're also be making chocolate bowls to uh, serve some of the angel food cake in, in a cube form. So lots of different things we're going to cover in this episode. Um, the first thing we're going to do is make our angel food cake because it takes a while to cool off because we want it to cool off in the pan to make sure it holds its shape. You'll want to use an angel food cake that has a removable, a removable bottom just because it's a little bit easier to get out if you do. Uh, mine's a little bit on the large side. It's actually nine and a half inches. Most angel food cake pans are about eight inches. Um, the recipe that I have on my website, www.theauberginechef.com, has an eight inch cake version and a nine and a half inch cake version, which is the one I have. Um, we're not going to grease it either because we want the cake to hold on to the pan while it's cooling off. Because what we're going to do is we're going to let it cool upside down so that way it maintains its fluffiness but it also makes it a little bit easier to release. Uh, another thing you want to make sure you have is you have um, uh, cake flour. Um, now I'm using the King Arthur brand flour because I, I particularly like their flour because they make an effort not to use chemicals in their flour and it's also an employee run, employee owned company so it's, an, it's, a, it's a good feeling to support them. But the reason we want to use cake flour is because it's lighter than all-purpose flour because all-purpose flour has bread flour in it. And so that makes sure that angel food cake does rise and stay risen the way it's supposed to. Now, I'm sure you can probably still use all-purpose flour, but I strongly recommend cake flour for best results. Um, you also want to separate some egg whites, and if you or some yeah, you want to separate some egg whites. So if you don't know how to separate eggs, click the button on your screen. And I'll take you over to a short video to show you how to do that. And to that, we're going to add four ounces of granulated sugar, or five ounces of granulated sugar. Now this is a nine and a half inch cake version, so I have eight egg whites in here, and I'm going to add five ounces of granulated sugar. And you want to make sure that your bowl is very clean, and I recommend wiping it out with vinegar to make sure that it's, uh, it's much more clean and it also adds a little bit of acidity which helps stabilize the egg whites but it's not super necessary that acid is in. Okay we want to put it over a double boiler. Notice that I have water that's gently simmering. It's probably getting a little too hot. You don't want to use super hot water because the steam while it's hotter than the boiling water you don't want to accidentally overcook your egg whites. All we're really doing is we're just trying to knock the chill off of the egg whites if they've been in the refrigerator, but we're also trying to dissolve that sugar that's in there and it won't take very long. So just stir it until all that sugar is nice and dissolved. There's no temperature that you're looking for. Um, about 80 degrees is enough to knock that chill off. But we want to make sure that sugar is melted as well. Okay, so once that sugar is nice and dissolved and you've knocked off the cold off of your egg whites, we can go ahead and whip them up to soft peaks. Okay, so the egg whites are at soft peaks. You can see that it has that nice um, curve to it, so it's not too stiff. Okay, now we want to add about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract, and then just a splash of almond extract. Go ahead and fold that in. Then you also want to have three ounces of cake flour and three ounces of powdered sugar sifted together, and we're going to go ahead and add in the powdered sugar and the flour mixture about half at a time and just fold that in as well. Okay, you want to make sure not to overfold your mixture because you'll pop all those air cells. You'll lose a lot of volume. So we're going to go ahead and pour in our angel food cake batter. So we're going to go ahead and bake it at 375 degrees for about 25 minutes or so. We're going to check it um, about 20 minutes in. We're going to take a toothpick or a knife and stick it into the middle of the cake, which would have been this case, it has a hole in it, so we're going to stick it in the middle of the ring. Um, so that way we can check, check to see if it's done. If it comes out clean, no crumbs, no batter on it, then it can come out of the oven. It should also have a lightly golden brown uh, top and sides. Okay, our angel food cake is uh, ready to come out of the oven. I'm going to flip this upside down. So put the uh, cooling rack on top, then flip the whole thing over carefully. So we're not trying to bang it out at this point. And because we didn't grease the pan, it should stick in there, although my pan's non-stick. And then what I'm going to do is put it on a sheet pan so the whole thing is mobile. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on my rolling rack to cool off completely. And that should take about an hour to three hours. Um, three hours if you've got the time, one hour if you don't. Let's take our angel food cake out of the pan. So we'll run it along the edge. And then this is a releasable um, bottom, so we'll just pull it out. Then we'll run our knife along the bottom and the middle and it'll pop right out. Let's go ahead and make our ermine icing. Now I've taken 
eight ounces or one cup of whole milk and added three tablespoons or one ounce of all-purpose flour. And we're just going to whisk this together. You can throw in a pinch of salt if we'd like. And ermine icing is a unique icing as it's brew based, but it was also the icing that was normally or regularly the original um, icing for red velvet cakes. Um, cream cheese icing was not always the base icing. So what I'm doing is I'm warming it up over medium, medium heat and just continuously whisking to keep the flour from burning and to keep everything nice and mixed. Okay, you can see that it's getting a lot thicker and more creamy, kind of like gravy. I mean, that's basically what we're making here is a roux for gravy. Okay, and we want to make sure to cook it for a few minutes after we've gotten it to thicken so we can cook out that starchy flavor and make sure that it's at its maximum thickness. Okay, go ahead and pour your roux base into a separate bowl and then cover it with plastic wrap all the way to the surface of the icing base to prevent a skin from forming. Okay, and we're going to chill this in the refrigerator until it's at least room temperature. So we're going to take 8 ounces of granulated sugar, 8 ounces of unsalted butter at room temperature, and a splash of vanilla extract, and we want to cream this together using the whip attachment. Alright, so scrape down the sides of your bowl after you get everything nice, light, and fluffy, and then taking a small bit of the roux base, scoop it in, and just repeat until all the base is inside the mixing bowl. And then beat the or whip the icing on high speed until it's light and fluffy. And this could take a while. Alright, so to make the chocolate bowls, take a little bit of pan release, spray it on a paper towel, and grease your balloon. This will help release the chocolate bowl a little bit cleaner. Then taking some melted coating chocolate, which is just regular chocolate, but it's had the cocoa butter removed and replaced with vegetable oil, so it sets up properly. Um, if you're using regular chocolate, you want to make sure to temper it. Uh, tempered, uh, untempered chocolate won't work for this, so you can't just melt down a chocolate bar, for example, and just use it, or chocolate chips. You have to use coating chocolate or tempered chocolate. Just dip the bowl all the way around, or dip, a, dip the balloon all the way around. And then just set it on a parchment paper on a sheet pan and let it set up for about 10 minutes in the refrigerator. Now recently on Facebook there was a larger bowl, chocolate bowl, that was going around. I, I shared the picture myself, uh, which kind of inspired me to make chocolate bowls for this episode. Um, now he used a much larger balloon, but I'm going to use a smaller balloon so it's a little bit more manageable and so it sits in my refrigerator well. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to make it a much larger in shape. And what we have here is a coffee mug. You can also use a bowl because this balloon's a little small. I'm using a mug. Um, and it provides somewhere for the, the balloon to sit in, but it also keeps the chocolate from going all the way to the bottom of the balloon. And it makes it so we can carry it as well. So scoop some chocolate onto the balloon. And we'll take some white chocolate as well. All right, and we're going to let this cool off in the, free, in the fridge for a few minutes, and then we're going to put on a second layer just the same way. All right, so now that our chocolate bowl is nice and cold, we can go ahead and remove the balloon. What we're going to do is place a piece of tape on a spot on the balloon. That's going to keep it from popping or exploding. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pinprick it. Ooh! Well, it worked. <laughs> You can just take off the balloon and there you go. Normally it's not supposed to pop like that. Um, but this is my only balloon that I have left, so we can do it on one of the smaller ones. But this is the finished balloon. Wow. So with the smaller balloons, you should be able to poke a hole at the top near where you tie the balloon. And that should allow it to deflate nicely. And after you get to a certain point, you can just cut off the whole thing. And then it should just peel right off. And there you go. Now this one had a big chunk on the side that's missing because I didn't dip it all the way around. But I have some other bowls that came out okay. And, then, and a lot of times your chocolate bowls will have a hole in the bottom because that's just where the 
the loom was resting, it was just right on top of the parchment paper. It's not a big deal. If you're using ice cream or some other thing that could seep through that hole, cover it up with a little bit of coating chocolate, pop it back in the refrigerator. You should store these in the refrigerator until you're ready to use them anyway. Okay, let's go ahead and build our dessert uh, for a basically a single serving or maybe two people. might be a little bit big for um, just one person. So our, this is our finished ermine icing. I can show you what it looks like in the bowl. It came out nice and light and fluffy, just like regular icing, just like a regular buttercream. Um, it's a little bit heavy, and it's a little bit, I think it's a pretty sweet tasting. Um, and it's got a little bit of a gritty texture, which you don't find in a lot of other icings other than American buttercream. We're going to pop a little dot right in the middle of our plate to act like glue. This is another one of the chocolate bowls, a smaller hole this time. Um, so we're just going to put it right there in the middle. And then I just cubed up some of the angel food cake and diced up or cut up some strawberries. And we're just going to build a dessert. And we'll squeeze in little dollops of the ermine icing. Okay, here's the fully assembled chocolate bowl with the angel food cake and the strawberries and the ermine icing. It's a pretty big bowl, so I would say this is probably good for at least two, maybe even three servings. All right, so that's how you make the angel food cake, the chocolate bowls, and the ermine icing. Make sure that you let your balloons uh, or your chocolate bowl set up nice and hard before you pop the balloons, so that way they hold their shape and so that you don't get that hole in the bottom. Remember, you can use a little bit of coating chocolate to patch up the bottom if you need to. Um, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty easy to make. Um, so I hope you learned a lot today. Thank you for watching. And remember, the aubergine chef demystifying dessert, one recipe at a time.